Hot yoga in Chelsea is in trouble in a civil suit brought by someone who says they are a trans woman, biological male, was Dylan Miles, now goes by Allie Miles. And this is the third gender identity discrimination lawsuit that Allie has filed in 13 months. This is Allie. Three lawsuits in one year. And the latest is based on an incident in hot yoga Chelsea. Would anyone care to relay the facts that happened in Chelsea? hot yoga Chelsea? Happy to do it, but happy to let you guys have the airtime. Peter, take a shot. I think Beth's taking this one. So, Go ahead, Beth. Uh, okay. So, I mean, as I understand it, this happened just across town from where I live, but I really am not familiar with the case that well, um, that uh, Allie Miles wanted to use the locker room and showers where all the other women were. And Miles is identifying as a woman, says she is transitioning, um, but that's how she identifies, born male and still has, you know, male genitals. And a lot of the women, other women in the locker room were really offended by Miles's conduct because she was just letting it all hang out. And mm-hmm. the other women were like, she's a man, like she's just 150 percent male. Uh, so they were really offended. And the, and the club was like, yeah, you can't use this facility. When you read the law, though, and I was reading the law because it's not my area. I really know crime and this is civil. But, you know, gender identity is how one perceives themselves, regardless of their birth sex. In New York City. She's defined as transitioning. And so, of course, in my mind, my practical mind, I'm thinking, well, if you're transitioning, you're not there yet. You're You're in the process. And years ago, I covered a case. I was telling Peter off air in Clearwater where he is. I I covered a case involving a transgender person transitioned from female to male and then married a woman. And, you know, I won't go through that whole story, but the judge had to determine if this couple was in a a legal marriage. And um, he went through a transition and then had his birth certificate changed. And it seems like if you go and have your birth certificate sex changed, then that has to be honored because you are legally now a woman, not the a man, not the woman you were born. So, but that's not the case anymore. In reading the law, you don't have to have gone through the birth certificate change. You just proclaim yourself presenting yes. as a woman, and everybody has to honor that. So, like this, every person at the yoga studio, these women who were offended in the locker room, they have to honor it too. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure either because I think you can make a case for harassment. Or there's definitely a peeping Tom law in New York City where you're not allowed to creep around and, and look at naked women. And that's apparently what this Miles was doing, Peter. They say that uh, the person who claims to be transitioning is, I think this is a this is a quote from Chelsea Hot Yoga to the Washington or to the New York Post. This person who claims to be a transitioning woman came into the female locker room, number one, in male shorts that were down to his knees, although there could be some hormonal addition because his bust is bigger than mine, said one witness. He did not wear any feminine top to cover his bust. Um, He also derobed, and he is a full male. There's 150% man, as Beth said. There were things hanging out. Then they go on. It wasn't even like he was just standing there. He was crouched down on the floor in front of the shower stalls. That is creepy. That is what you do if you're trying to see in the shower stalls. Uh, It was very uncomfortable for one of the women that was in there, and she was completely naked, as one does when one showers after hot yoga. Then this person started in immediately by reciting the law to the people who objected, and they could see, this Miles person could see, that there were other women, this is a quote again, amongst myself, that were notably upset. And, And the female witness said, this person came there, it looks, with the with the intention of starting a problem. This cannot be protected by the law. So I, a couple thoughts on this case, just generally big picture. These are things that are going to have to be decided in court. And I think that's part of when we go down the line that he's filing or she's filing all of these lawsuits. It reminds me of back in the day in Florida when the ADA policies changed and there would be people that were wheelchair bound that would hook up with a lawyer and go to every establishment and see if they had the proper ramps and elevators and if they had made the updates. And if they didn't, they would file lawsuits. 
And again, we'd have to decide and the courts would have to decide, did it apply retroactively? Were they in violation right now? I think that's probably part of what is going on. But I think the hot yoga studio also is going to have to look into the actions of the plaintiff in this case. And if uh, her being barred from the showers has nothing to do with her gender identity, but instead her actions while in the locker room. And if they ban her from the locker room because of her actions in the locker room, that's different than banning that is her different. because she's transgender. But let's face it, the, the law should not uh, protect this person and allow this person to enter the female locker room, even if there wasn't weird behavior inside the locker room. No woman wants to look at a penis in the women's locker room. That's a fact. That's the truth. And Beth, you know as well as I do that there are real reasons why they created female-only spaces to begin with, whether it's a bathroom or a locker room. And that is because women have traditionally been the victims of sexual assault repeatedly in these types of locations. And so now I feel for Hot Yoga Chelsea because they say, look, we've allowed a lot of trans people into the locker rooms, but this one's really upsetting people. So we drew the line there. But they have to let even the ones who aren't upsetting people, well, they probably are, but I'm just saying not doing this weird stuff, they have to because of the New York City law. And what they've said in this article is, we've been informed by our lawyers. This is somebody who oversees six commercial buildings in Manhattan, just giving color commentary. We've been informed by our lawyers to change everything. Everything has to be a neutral bathroom now in order to avoid this problem. And that's not a solution either. Because I was just in a, I just had to go to a neutral bathroom last week in New York City. You were like, there's just a bunch of stalls and you come out and you have to wash your hands next to a man. That doesn't protect women any better. I don't want that. It's a, it's a confined space. It's a, it's in the back. It's behind closed doors. And I don't want, honestly, to be pulling up my skirt or down my pants in a stall next to a man. And I don't know who's in there or how he plans on using this space. This, this law cannot stand, Beth. So I think, and I agree with Peter, there need to be challenges to the law uh, and every case is sort of fact specific, but I think that we will find uh, more definition as, as time goes on because the terms are pretty vague. I understand what you're saying about your own use of bathrooms. When I'm when given a choice, I, I don't like to go into a bathroom that has a urinal in it. I just don't. Um, and I, I, I totally get what you're saying because we're of that generation that's living through this transition. Um, younger people are very accustomed to it, but it's just not my life experience. So it is taking some getting used to, although I plenty of, I know plenty of people who are transgender, that's fine. Um, but I think the law does need to kind of be a little more specific. They it, Look, you can create a third bathroom. You can create a third locker room. Um, okay, that's fine. You want to do that. But women can't lose at every turn. What they're doing right now is every time the, the woman loses, track meet, swim race, um, bathroom issue, locker issue, women lose. You're afraid of sexual assault? Too bad. Check all your instincts. They're not dangerous. Bullshit. I'm not saying every trans person is, but there's enough of a faction there that we have legitimate cause to be concerned. And there's enough of a faction of actual biological men who identify as men who will use this as an invitation to get into our spaces, whether it's a prison or elsewhere, that we have every right to object. This law must change, and we need a case like this. Good, he wants to test the law by, by going into all these places and becoming a serial litigant. Let's do that. Let's find strong lawyers who will actually stand up for women and their rights, because it's just a matter of time before somebody gets hurt. This is absolutely outrageous. Junk science. That's what the doctor called many of those fruit and vegetable supplements on the market. Junk science because they use extracts of common produce department fruits and vegetables with few health benefits. But I want to tell you about Field of Greens. Field of Greens is different. They use whole organic fruit and vegetables, not a watered-down supplement. And it's backed by a better health promise, which I'm going to tell you about. Each ingredient in Field of Greens was scientifically chosen to support vital organs like heart, lungs, and kidney health. Others support your immune system, your blood pressure, metabolism, and healthy weight loss. Their better, better health promise is simple. The next time you're at the doctor for a checkup, if the doctor does not say you're looking healthier than before, you get your money back. That's a deal right there. So let me get you started with 15% off. Visit fieldofgreens.com and use my promo code MK. That's promo code MK at fieldofgreens.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.